Whereas is provided in section 631 of the Public Finance Management Act, Cap 15.01, the Act, that the Minister of Finance may, by affirmative resolution of Parliament, borrow from a bank or the financial institution for the capital or current expenditure of government. And whereas is further provided under by section 64 of the Act, that money borrowed by the government must be paid into and form part of the consolidated fund. And whereas the Minister of Finance considered it necessary to borrow an amount of US 42 million 700,000 from the Caribbean Development Bank Ordinary Capital Reserves Resources for Recovery and Resilience Building Policy Based Loan. And whereas the loan is repayable in 48 equal or approximately equal and consecutive quarterly installments. And whereas the loan payments commence on the 1st day of January, to the 1st day of April, the 1st day of July, and the 1st day of October of each year, after a grace period of two years, following the date of the loan, or such later date as the bank specifies in writing. And whereas the interest is payable at the rate of 4.9% per annum on the amount of the principal disbursed and outstanding. And whereas the commitment fee is payable at a rate of 1% per annum on the amount of the loan disbursed. Be it resolved that Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to borrow an amount of US 42 million 700,000 from the bank's ordinary capital resources for the recovery and resilience building policy loan. The loan is repayable in 48 equal or approximately equal, equal and consecutive quarterly installments. The loan payments commence on the 1st day of January, the 1st day of April, the 1st day of July, and the 1st day of October each year after a grace period of two years following the date of the loan or such later date as the bank specifies in writing. Interest is payable at a rate of 4.9% per annum on the amount of the principal disbursed and outstanding. The commitment fee is payable at a rate of 1% per annum on the amount of the loan to be disbursed. Mr. Speaker, we are seeking approval, Mr. Speaker, from the Parliament to borrow the sum of 42.7 million US dollars, Mr. Speaker, from the Caribbean Development Bank. That money is to be used for two purposes, Mr. Speaker for modernization of the tax administration in the country, and two, for land administration services program. Mr. Speaker, it's a policy-based loan, Mr. Speaker, and a policy-based loan means that there are some prior conditions that government must meet, Mr. Speaker, before the loan is disbursed. That's why it's called a policy-based loan, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, part of these conditions, Mr. Speaker, that the bank must meet, we had to do some policy, policy actions. We had to, these are the prerequisites, Mr. Speaker, for obtaining that loan. It's called a policy-based loan, Mr. Speaker. And uh, we had to have some prior actions. The first prior action was, one, to enhance tax revenue and support fiscal, fiscal stability. What did we do, Mr. Speaker? We introduced the health and security levy at the rate of 2.5% on goods and services, except food items, medicines, selected bill materials, medical equipment and security, Mr. Speaker. And whilst we did that, we removed that, we removed that on some bill materials. So we put the 2.5% levy, and since we removed that on these bill materials, Mr. Speaker, we there was no 2.5 levy on these goods, Mr. Speaker. Further, Mr. Speaker, we removed that on medical equipment. And only last week, a local medical practitioner, last month, opened up modern facilities in Viewfort to save people who can't afford to take a helicopter and go, go abroad for services on, on in the air, nose and throat. A specialist, a local specialist, opened the modern equipment a modern practice in Viewfort, and he did not have to pay the 12.5% VAT, Mr. Speaker. We also increased the excise tax on tobacco products. That was, these were two of the revenue measures that we had 
this is called policy action number one, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, enhancing revenue is necessary. It's the same way the last government put $1.50 on every gallon of petrol that was, that every person, including fishermen, they had to pay $1.50 on every gallon of petrol or diesel purchase. What, what, what have we done? We have removed that for the fishermen of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. We have removed it, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> but the last government, the last government, even fishermen had to pay that, that increase in taxation, Mr. Speaker. And that 150, Mr. Speaker, was paid by everybody, all users, minibus drivers, taxi drivers, everyone, Mr. Speaker. But instead, Mr. Speaker, instead, and, I, and Mr. Speaker, you know at the time, in the year 2019, 2020, fuel was $13 per gallon. $13 per gallon, Mr. Speaker. And the government at the time, the revenue they, have, they got from that fuel, Mr. Speaker, the revenue at that price, the revenue they collected from that was very, was enhanced the collections, the collections at the time. But it was necessary because government needs money to run its services. It was necessary. But the, the price of fuel at the time was, it has never been lower during COVID because of low demand. $13 per gallon, Mr. Speaker. That's where it was at, at the time. Because the price of fuel on the world market was the lowest ever for a long time because of low demand in COVID. And talking about fuel, Mr. Speaker, we continue to subsidize LPG cooking gas, 20 pounds and 22 pound cylinder. The government continues to subsidize it. Every consumer who buys a 20 or 22 pound cylinder of gas, Mr. Speaker, the government contributes between 18 and 20 dollars for every LPG container, Mr. Speaker. Much more than was ever subsidized before in, in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. The second prior policy action, Mr. Speaker, was to unify and enhance legislation related to public debt management. And the government has approved, through its parliament, the Debt Management Act, and approved the annual publication of the Medium Debt Strategy, starting in 2023, consistent with the policy framework of the Public Debt Management Act. Mr. Speaker, I want, you, I want to read that again, Mr. Speaker. I want to read that again, Mr. Speaker. This government, instead of taking the shortcut and, and getting involved in DFCs below the line, to, so that they can't get the scrutiny of the public of St. Mr. Speaker. Here's what this government did. Unify and enhance legislation related to public debt management. The government has approved through its parliament the Public Debt Management Act and approved the annual publication of the medium term debt strategy starting in 2023, consistent with the policy framework of the Public Debt Management Act, Mr. Speaker. That means when we borrow, we'll come to the whole parliament and we'll come to the parliament and tell parliament the strategy of our borrowing, why and for what purpose, Mr. Speaker. Why and for what purpose, Mr. Speaker. So, in that case, Mr. Speaker, if we had ever borrowed $32 million to repair playing fields, we would have been able to show the public of St. Lucia how many playing fields were borrowed, how many people were repaired, and where the $32 million were spent, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Policy action number three, Mr. Speaker. The government through its cabinet has approved the public procurement regulations to promote and enforce the new Public Procurement Act. Mr. Speaker, the Public Procurement Act was there, but it needed reg regulations, and this government have we published the regulation, Mr. Speaker. Prior policy action number four, the government through its cabinet has approved public financial management regulations to promote and enforce the Public Finance Management Act, Mr. Speaker. Again, Mr. Speaker, the last government had to implement a Public fin Finance Management Act to get a policy-based loan. So this is not new, policy-based loans. So they had, but they published it 
without any regulations. But we have put regulations on the Public Finance Management Act, Mr. Speaker. The government approved the national energy policy to promote renewable energy and energy efficient, Mr. Speaker. Something that this government has done. We have approved a national energy policy, Mr. Speaker, and that policy will find itself in legislation at, uh, at a later date, Mr. Speaker. To respond to the current and future risks and impacts of climate change, the government has submitted the climate change bill to Parliament. We are going to be reading, we are going to be asking Parliament to approve this bill today by the Minister for Sustainable Development. He'll be leading in the charge on that, Mr. Speaker. Prior action number seven, to address distressed businesses and the management of non-performing loans, the government has submitted the bankruptcy and insolvency bill to Parliament. And Mr. Speaker, we are, this bill has had its first reading and we are committed to that, Mr. Speaker. But, but Mr. Speaker, I'll tell you what, the difference in our government is that we are ensuring that when this insolvency bill passes, because, Mr. Speaker, there's a belief in this country that a failed business is a failed human being, Mr. Speaker. That, that is not true. You can, you can fail in a business and you can reorganize yourself and you can come back, as they say in the, in the jargon, will come back and will again, Mr. Speaker. So we, have, we need to have insolvency and bankruptcy in a particular framework. But there is one provision, Mr. Speaker, that we stand by. We are saying that in a man's home, or woman's home, where, or family home, where they raise their family, their owner-occupied residence, there must be safeguards that that house cannot be taken really, really by a bank. The insolvency bill, Mr. Speaker, must make provision for the protection of a resident's family. Not building you have for rent or building you have for investment, but your family residence, Mr. Speaker. So when a, a civil servant, when a civil servant builds a house, Mr. Speaker, we must ensure that if one member of that family falls sick, that member of the family falls sick, or that member of the family has some level of distress, Mr. Speaker, the bank will have some consideration for that person. So the, the home where they raise their family cannot be just taken by a bank and sold as if it was a car or, or, or a piece of, of furniture, Mr. Speaker. So that is why, so we are talking to the drafters of, of that bill so we can ensure that that goes in in the insolvency in the insolvency bill, Mr. Speaker. Prior action number eight, to, Im to improve medium MS, micro and small businesses, medium businesses, access to finance, and expand the types of collateral available for MSME, the government approved the Security Interest Removal Properties Act aligned with legislative guide on secure transactions. Again, Mr. Speaker, the member, the Minister for Commerce, gave you a whole, gave you the entire history of MSMEs, Mr. Speaker. This government has made a direct investment into MSMEs. A direct investment, Mr. Speaker. As the Minister had in a statement, it's the same way only last week, we, in, we will inject over a period of time $20 million in the youth economy to ensure youth enterprises, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, part of the proceeds from that bill, Mr. Speaker, will be used to reorganize the tax administration of this country. I'll tell you what, Mr. Speaker. This government has given the most generous tax amnesty in the history of St. Lucia. No government has ever said taxes due before 2000 will be written off completely, completely. Before 2000 will be written off completely, Mr. Speaker. All interest and taxes 
due penalty. penalty, everything before it will be written up completely, Mr. Speaker. And after that, all interest and penalties, all taxes due before 2000 are written off. Everything. After, between. No, but, but what are you laughing at? But what are you laughing at? They correct you. What are you, what, what are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? They correct you. Did what? It makes no sense. Hey. Taxes due, all penalties and interest due. After that period, Mr. Speaker, and fines are written off. But the entire tax due before 2000 is written off. Also, Mr. Speaker, VAT. And I want to make a point about VAT, Mr. Speaker. Do you know VAT is money that's collected by business people on behalf of the government to be given back to the government, Mr. Speaker? Every 25th or something sort of month. And then there's a reconciliation, it's done. And then if you have to, owe, if you owe the government, you give the government, if the government owes you, they get they paid back for you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, some people have collected that VAT and they have not given it back to the government. They've not. So what we've done, Mr. Speaker, is to have a clean slate because, you know, when we come and talk about balance sheets and enhancing balance sheets of government and playing that they can use words people don't, under, don't understand and using these words can influence people, make you believe that you know something other people don't know. Very simple, very simple, very simple, Mr. Speaker. When a balance sheet is prepared, there is something called, there are two issues on the balance sheet. There's a provision for tax, and there's a tax liability. The tax liability is on the income statement, and the provision of tax is on the balance sheet. What happens, Mr. Speaker, that the tax for the year, less payments, is shown on the balance sheet, and the actual tax for the coming year, or for the year in question, is shown on the income statement. So what happens on a balance sheet, is that if there are fines and taxes, these are shown on the balance sheet as a credit in the liability section of the balance sheet. So your balance sheet will show that you have liabilities or penalties, fines and interest, plus the tax that you owe on the balance sheet. And the tax for the year in question is shown on income statement. What that means is when, if you have an audit, your auditor will say to you, you have a tax liability. If you don't have an audit, it will not, it will just be there. It will cause provision for income tax. Sometimes it's so big that in certain enterprises, it's called a prior tax liability. So it can be shown as a significant factor on your balance sheet because when a creditor or when a bank or when a financial institution goes wants to lend you money, they look at how much money you owe the government in terms of taxes. Because the government has a first charge if anything goes wrong, Mr. Speaker. So, we said, to strengthen these balance sheets, Mr. Speaker, we've written off all the fines, all the penalties, and all the interest on these taxes. So we're saying to the firm, to the business, pay, pay me only what you owe me. And the fines and the penalties will waive it for you. So that means in your balance sheet, you can debit your provision for income tax, which will reduce your, your liabilities and increase your net assets. That's what we did, Mr. Speaker. That is how which we try to strengthen the balance sheets of businesses. That is not talk, action, Mr. Speaker. Not talk, not just get them and say things that, that sound good and think that will never happen, but you say it happen. But, but, but just because you say it happen and it sounds good, it will happen. Real, tangible things that will affect the balance sheets of businesses, Mr. Speaker. That's what we did. So, this government's record on tax. No government. 
and I said that any fear of favor, no government can beat our record on tax amnesties for the people of St. Lucia. No government. No government has helped businesses more as far as tax is concerned. No government. None at all. None at all, Mr. Speaker. I mean, Mr. Speaker, I want to put it on, on the record for the young people in St. Lucia. Do you know there was a time when you could not leave St. Lucia without a tax clearance? Yeah, when you heard them talking, and you know, Mr. Speaker, the more you catch them not speaking the truth, is the, is the more they double back on not speaking the truth. And the more they try to convince themselves that they're speaking the truth, Mr. Speaker. We, we were the ones who removed that provision in the, from the laws of St. From the practical, from the practical workings in St. Lucia. It was Kenny Anthony. Oh, you remember that? You remember that, eh? But you won't tell them. That's why when they say you build a bridge, you should, you should say it's not me. You, you, you must not, you must, you must not encourage wrongdoing. You're a good man. But you insist in encouraging wrongdoing. Don't do that, man. That's not you. I know you well. Don't do that. We build a bridge. So, don't let anybody use you, comrade. You're a good boy. <coughs> so, <coughs> um, you need a tax clearance. You need a tax clearance, Mr. Speaker. A tax clearance to leave this country. You have to pay. <coughs> you have to pay five dollars for it. And then many people, Mr. Speaker, including people who used to have to run away from St. Lucia, they could live on the airport, they could have the tax clearance. So they're only going to take a boat and go to Matic to get away. <laughs> because they didn't have no tax clearance, Mr. Speaker. That wasn't the laws of St. Lucia. That wasn't the laws of St. Lucia. But, <laughs> but, Mr. Speaker, they come and they pretend this government wants to stop you from traveling. This government wants to seize your property. All in the laws of St. Lucia. What we are doing, we are cleaning that up. So what we did, and again, Mr. Speaker, it shows you the level of transparency in our government, Mr. Speaker. We did not, the Inland Revenue put out that legislation, and the Minister of Finance did not know, because we had them to hide. I didn't call the Inland Revenue and chastise them. Or call the permanent secretary to finance and chastise him because we have nothing to hide. That was <coughs> what? No, that was discussion. But let me tell you further, Mr. Speaker. That was discussion, Mr. Speaker. No, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Even when the last government did something good, they saw in a hurry. And Mr. Speaker, listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. <coughs> Even when the last government did something good. They're so in a hurry to criticize us that they're not even remembering what they did was good. It was amusing. And the sad thing is that some young, young people and some other surrogates just rushing that, rushing it. <clears throat> you know, Mr. Speaker, who started the tax administration and procedures bill? The last government. And the intention was good. <clears throat> The intention was there are certain laws related to tax in St. Lucia. So you put all of them in one concise, one piece of concise legislation and you remove all the, 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 all the, the provisions that are not necessary. They started it. <laughs> you know, it's amusing to me, Mr. Speaker. So instead of, instead of saying that that's a good thing, let's join in cleaning it up, for, for the whole country to, to, to benefit from it. They attack it, they criticize it, because it is a chance now to attack Philip J. Pierre. Attack him, this, that, blah, 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 blah. Something they started here. You know. <laughs> it really, uh, it, remember what shows there, remember that, of course. You, you remember cabinet, the cabinet memo, October something, when you instructed the Ministry of Finance to put all these certain laws together. <coughs> huh? But that was never prepared. Elections, the elections came, you're lost. Came, you're so the draft came out after. But nobody, but we didn't approve the draft. The draft was not approved. No. <coughs> Mr. The draft was not approved. It was, it was for Mr. Speaker. 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 Mr.
Mr. Speaker. That's how you used to go over. Mr. Speaker. That's how you used to go over. That's how you used to go Mr. Speaker, you know, the difference between the difference between them and us, Mr. Speaker, is the difference is we trust our civil servants. I want to tell you here in this honorable house that no tax administration draft ever came to the cabinet of St. Lucia. Never. 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 Because what was out was for discussion discussion to see if we could get a proper document so we can prepare a draft to come to this country you see <coughs> mr speaker so mr speaker that's not your that's not your business you you you're not there again are your business that's not your business now nah, i answer you you don't deserve an answer i answer you mr speaker mr speaker if you think you get me annoyed you can never get me annoyed i bigger than you you're trying but i bigger than you you see? And that's why you will not accept what happened. You must accept it. Let, let, let me tell you. Sean, tell him. Mr. Speaker, another key operation, Mr. Speaker, of the bill. <laughs> and another one, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, another will also use will also use, Mr. Speaker, that money, Mr. Speaker, that loan for what we call administration land administration services, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, members, you know, members, there is something that we must do as a country. We must own up, one, to our debt, and we must own up to when we make a mistake, Mr. Speaker. And we must try to do better the next time. Governments, government I was part of, and governments before, they have acquired people's land and have not paid them. <coughs> Mr. Speaker? The Land Administration Act, Mr. Speaker, seeks to clear six. Member for Miku South and Member for Castry Central. <coughs> member for Miku South and Member, member for Castry Central. Member for Central. Now I've allowed your members. <laughs> member for Castry Central. Member for Castry Central, Speaker is talking to you. Prime Minister, Member for Castry Central, and Member for Miku South. I've allowed you all the, the latitude to be able to do the cross talk. However, we're dealing with the business of the House. Please allow the Prime Minister to continue with his presentation. Go ahead, Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, that's what he encourages. Not his fault, he encourages. That's what he encourages, Mr. Speaker. That's what he encourages. So, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> what we're doing is that we're trying, if we can, if we can, Mr. Speaker, if we can cause some order, cause some order, Mr. Speaker, in the administration of land services in terms of so you can put some order in land acquisition in this country, Mr. Speaker. So we've taken the bold step to borrow money, Mr. Speaker, because we know that people need compensation. So it's something that will, will be part of an entire program that will be done by the Ministry of Physical Development so we see if we can limit that liability that the government owes to the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, we <coughs> believe, Mr. Speaker, that these two pieces of legislation, Mr. Speaker, will help in two significant areas. One, in the in tax administration, Mr. Speaker, helping to make the records easier, helping to get a tax department. Because, Mr. Speaker, another thing, Mr. Speaker, we approved tax refunds repayment for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. 
that ha again, Mr. Speaker, the government took a conscious effort, which was followed by other Caribbean island islands to pay tax refunds, Mr. Speaker. But because of the way the system in the tax department is, an archaic system, a system that the, info that, that the information is not readily available, Mr. Speaker, that was part of the reason why the inner revenue was, was not able to pay the total amount of tax refunds in the money that they, was made available to them, Mr. Speaker. Because of the, the archaic nature, all the paper, all etc. in the in the in every department. So that money Mr. Speaker, will be used to improve the, the information technology capabilities, to, in, to improve the information processes so the taxpayer can be better served, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have, Mr. Speaker, also that loan, Mr. Speaker, the policy-based loan is, is called a PBL, the interest rate. On the, the, on the consideration, you see, that's why it's called the Land Administration Act. On the, we see what you have to do with a total package. Probably um, discuss with people, give them back their land, you know, it's a total package. It's not only the interest rate. Yeah. Something that can be considered, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. So we can consider it because it's, it's, it's statutory interest, right? Something that can be considered, yeah. That can be considered, yeah. Well, I told him already. Yeah, advice, advice. I, I just told you that the member for Shozel is a good man. You're a good man, just bad company. I just told you that. Leave him alone. No, you're a good man, just bad company. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, the rate of injury music on that loan is 4.9 percent, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, and as the point that the minister made, the member for shows that made, Mr. Speaker, as compared to 6% that we pay on acquisition. So it's 4.9%, so we have to deal with that discrepancy, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I, I think this, I think this is, I think, Mr. Speaker, this is an important piece of legislation, Mr. Speaker. It will help. First of all, it will help serve the people of St. Lucia better. Serve them better in terms of tax and also serve them better in terms of the land that has been acquired, a land that has been acquired for years, Mr. Speaker. For land that has been acquired for years, Mr. Speaker, and we we'll see if we can create, put some order in that, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I urge members to, I urge members, Mr. Speaker, to pass this resolution, Mr. Speaker, which will help solve, help, help, Mr. Speaker, solve many problems that have existed in this country for a very long time, Mr. Speaker. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.